Hello and welcome to our first lesson from our interesting course highlights from Egyptian civilization and history. First, let me introduce yourself. This is Muhammad Ahmad, a translator and native Arabic instructor from Egypt. I teach Arabic as a foreign language and English as a second language. I got my TEFL diploma certified from Oxford University in the UK and I used to teach at Fairfield University in the United States. I also get my bachelor degree from Egypt. Please feel free to contact me anytime whenever you have any question. This is our first lesson from the interesting impressive course about Egyptian civilization, particularly in ancient civilization. In this course, we are going to discuss highlights from Egyptian civilization and history. In this course, we are going to know why Egypt is important in the human history, particularly in ancient Egypt. So we are starting by identifying Egypt as the cradle of civilization. Ancient Egypt is known for being the world's first organized society. The Nile, River Nile played an important role in Egypt history. The Egyptians and their institutions had an amazing bond with the Nile. This was one of the unique features of the ancient Egyptian civilization. Egyptians were also the first people to believe in life after death. Long distance trade was common in ancient Egypt sustained contacts with Southwest Asia and very good craft civilization meant the development of towns and hierarchy flourished. As we can see here, this is River Nile and it starts here from the bottom of the screen. It starts here from Nubia, originally it starts from Ethiopia, Lake Victoria in Ethiopia and it continues streaming until it reaches to Egypt, to Nubia South Egypt, then it continues to the Mediterranean where it pours in the Mediterranean. So here this part, the green part close to Mediterranean is known for Delta, is named as Delta or Lower Egypt and the second part to the bottom of the screen is named Upper Egypt. So Egypt is mainly divided into two main parts. This upper, uh, this uh, lower part close to the Mediterranean is named Delta or Lower Egypt, and this part close to the bottom of the screen is um, called Nubia or Upper Egypt. And this is the Nile, and also this is the Red Sea at the right. So we continue here. We are going to discuss several kingdoms that lived and flourished in Egypt. Of course, we are not going to discuss in this lesson all the kingdoms of Egypt. We are going to discuss the main kingdoms that lived and flourished in Egypt. So, we are going to discuss three main kingdoms. First of all, we are going to discuss the Lower Egypt Kingdom which was con controlled by Horus. Horus was the chief delta god and Seth was the upper Egypt god. Egyptians, ancient Egyptians believed in many gods. Particularly, they believed in uh, gods or we can call them deities for everything. They believed in uh, god for food, god for water, god for rain. For everything, they associated the god. So Horus was the chief delta god or like a governor for the delta and Seth was the upper Egypt god. Then we have King, King Menes of upper, of upper Egypt and according to the tradition, Menes united the two kingdoms, the lower and the upper, establishing his capital at Memphis. The tombs of ancient Egyptians show the exceptional care in which they readed themselves for life after death. So as we can see here, Lower Egypt was a kingdom controlled by Horus and Upper Egypt was another kingdom controlled by Seth. Menes unified or united these two kingdoms in order to make it one kingdom or one state. This is Horus at right, Seth at left. This is King Menes. Now we start by the Old Kingdom. The Old Kingdom is the one which Menes or Nurmer, Nurmer is an, another name uh, for Menes. According to the palette of Nurmer, an ancient carved stone tablet, Upper and Lower Egypt were first unified around 3100 BCE 
when the leader of Iber Egypt, Minas, conquered his enemies and brought a centralized government to the many small countries along the Nile. Around 2100 BCE, the old kingdom went into decline, and for, for 200 years, Egypt was without centralized control. As we can see here, this is palette of Narmer, the Middle Kingdom. This is the second kingdom we are going to discuss in this lesson. Following the first intermediate period in ancient Egypt was the Middle Kingdom, which lasted between 2000 to 1700 BCE. The, Egyptians gov the Egyptian government was centralized by a new dynasty of pharaohs with their capital situated in Thebes. Some historians believe that the pharaoh who appointed the biblical Joseph as his vizier was of the Hyksos race, and although their domination was relatively short lived from 1700 to 1555 BCE, monuments and scraps from that time are still present on the Egyptian landscape. We move quickly to the new kingdom. This new kingdom lasted between 1560 to 1087 BCE and was started by Pharaoh named Ahmus, who finally defeated the Hyksos invaders. The last strong Pharaoh in Egypt was Ramses III of the 19th dynasty that lasted from 1182 to 1151 BCE, whose successors had to deal with a corrupt administration and a succession of foreign invaders. In this picture that we see, this is Ahmus, the pharaoh that defeated the Hyksos and dismissed them from Egypt. Life in ancient Egypt. Now we are moving to a different aspect of Egyptian history, life in ancient Egypt. By studying this tomb of Antinous, we discovered how they prepped particular foods and what their major diet was. The Egyptians enjoyed various fruits like grapes, figs, dates, and also pomegranates and flour to make a range of baked goods. How about ancient Egypt mummies? Egypt or ancient Egypt is very famous for mummies. The practice of preserving the bodies of dead kings as mummies is one of the many fascinating things about the civilization of ancient Egypt. Apart from ancient Egypt mummies, there are several interesting things to be discovered in the exotic country. People who have seen the Great Pyramid at Giza never forget the experience. If you are interested in ancient Egypt mummies, you should visit the necropolis complex at least once in your lifetime. The necropolis complex also contains the three pyramids of Giza, which are the three greatest, most huge pyramids in Egypt. You, you can find out more about ancient Egypt in this fascinating book, Great Tour in Ancient Egypt. It's completely free. You can download it free from the link below. And in this book, you will find and you will know a lot of things about ancient Egypt. Among these things, the domestic cat in ancient Egypt, interesting facts about ancient Egypt, the Nile cruise, and a lot more. Now we should know in this introductory lesson what is the importance of ancient Egypt civilization. So Egypt is where history first emerged. It's here that we have the first pictographic record of events and persons. Hieroglyphics, the system of writing used by ancient Egyptians, can be traced back to about 3,200 years before Christ. The history of ancient Egypt last lasted for about 3,000 years. Ancient Egypt declined, was overran, and thereafter ruled by foreign powers. The Greeks and Romans who ruled after the decline were aware of the great similarity between their own gods and those of the Egyptians. Ancient Egypt was, de was dead for 1,500 years until the French came across the Rosetta Stone in the 19th century invasion of Egypt by Napoleon. This priceless discovery was inscribed in both Greek and Egyptian, and it was the key that allowed the deciphering of hieroglyphic by Jean-Francois Champollion in 1822. As we can see here, this is Rosetta Stone, and we see also here this is like the hieroglyphic alphabet. So, who is highlighted from Egypt civilization course for? People who intend to travel to Egypt, they will find it very interesting course. People who are interested in Egypt sightseeing and history, 
students or travelers who intended to travel for tourism or studying Egyptology or world history, people interested in visiting ancient Egypt areas, pharaonic tombs and temples, or Islamic architecture during Ottoman and Mamluk eras, people who seek for better understanding of Egypt history, civilization, and modern Egyptian culture. Who needs this course? Learners who find difficulty in getting easy resources about Egypt history and civilization, people who are interested in learning about Egypt modern culture and sightseeing, people struggling in learning Egyptology or Egypt history, people who need information and knowledge about Egypt history, culture, early ancient Egypt or Islamic and Arabic Egypt. Now course goals are very important. You should know that you will be acquainted with necessary knowledge about legacy of the pharaohs, Greeks, Romans, and Muslims and Arabs who ruled after them. Learners will be provided with Egypt's civilization and its historic influence over other civilizations and countries. Learners will be acquainted with Egypt's prominent place in the history of Islam. You will also be acquainted about the leading role of Egypt in Arab's education system, literature, music, architecture, radio, and cinema. Now, let's move to the first lesson of this course. This was just an introductory lesson to the course. Now, let's move to the actual first lesson of the highlights from Egyptian civilization course. This is the first lesson of, of the highlights from ancient Egypt civilization course. Egypt and the Nile. As we have just discussed, the, the ancient Egyptians and the Nile have a very strong, important bond together. Nile was like the life source for Egypt. So let's start by knowing the importance of Nile for Egypt. As we see here, this is the Nile River, and this is a picture of two fishermen. This is River Nile in Egypt, in Aswan. Aswan is the first city at the south which Nile go across. As we see here, this is how farmers we are planting and irrigating using Nile water. So, Egypt in first place is an agricultural country. The Egyptian economy depends primarily on agriculture as we see here now we are getting back to ancient Egypt this is a moral of Narmer or Minis conquering lower Egypt as we have just known that Narmer or Minis united for first time in ancient Egypt history the two kingdoms the two main kingdoms lower Egypt or Delta and upper Egypt Narmer for first time made Egypt one country. He united not only Lower and Upper Egypt, he also united the smaller states around the Nile River. The new pharaoh established their capital at the strategic site of Memphis. Just south of the delta and over the next several centuries consolidated their rule. Probably no other dynasty in history has been so successful in creating an effective yet apparently timeless form of government. For thousands of years, Egyptian pharaohs were able to convey in their subjects a sense of permanence and eternity while constantly adjusting the system to meet new needs. Ma'at or Mat was the god of order, justice, and truth. A woman wearing a crown, surmounted by a huge ostrich feather, her totem symbol is a stone platform or foundation representing the staple base on which order is built. Ma'at was the personification of the fundamental order of the universe, without which all of creation would perish. The primary duty of the pharaoh was to uphold this order by maintaining the law and administering justice. To reflect this, many pharaohs took the title Beloved of Ma'at, emphasizing their focus on justice and truth. The course of the stars, the sequence of day and night, and the passage of all things from life to death were part of this universal unchanging Mahat. Osiris, Osiris in Egyptian mythology, ruler of the realm of the dead. As king of Egypt, Osiris taught his people law, agriculture, religion, and other things of civilization. 
Osiris was murdered by his brother Seth, his sister and wife Isis buried his scattered remains. Each burial place was thereafter regarded as holy. Osiris lived on this underworld as the ruler of the dead, but he was also regarded as a source of renewed life. Seth or Seth was the Seth was the god of the desert, storm and violence, which are all enemies of the fertile, prosperous, narrow valley of the Nile. He was the brother of Osiris. Seth had killed Osiris by tricking him into a coffin which he threw into the Nile. When Osiris' wife Isis heard about this, she started searching desperately for her husband's body to bury it properly. She asked everyone she met and finally some children told her where it was. Isis mourned for her dead husband, then she hid the body while she went back to look after her son Horus, still a baby. This was terrified that Isis might be able to bring Osiris back from the dead since she was a great magician. So Sis found where she had hidden the body and cut it into pieces which he scattered up and down the line. Now Isis had to find all the scattered pieces of Osiris. Whenever she found a piece, she buried it there and built a shrine. This means that there are lots of places in Egypt where Osiris was buried. Osiris himself became the king of the dead and all Egyptians hoped they would join him after that. Now we speak about Horus or Horus the son of Osiris which, who was the god of balance and harmony assigned to maintain the Ma'at of Egypt. His connection was to ensure the continuing existence and activity of the gods on earth by means of religious access and to maintain the natural order such as the flow of the Nile and the fertility of the soil. He didn't rule by the consent of the governed, of the governed but by the decision of the god. Now we have the first pyramid built was the graded one of Zoser, which exists even today in Saqqara city, the necropolis of Memphis. Built in the year 2650 before Christ by the architect uh, Imen Hotib. Initially it was supposed to be Mastaba but later floors were added until they reached six. It is the oldest monument, monumental work in stone known to man that exists. Its exterior walls of white limestone measures 545 meters from north to south and 227 meters from east to west. The wall has 14 doors, 13 of them false. Its height is 66 meters. In its interior lies the, the sculptural chamber of the pharaoh, Seneferu, with cladding of pink granite and sealed with a block of a stone of three tons weight. Now we see here many types of pyramids. We see the bent pyramid, the Great Pyramids of Giza, the most huge pyramids in Egypt. As we can see here, this is the Great Pyramid, Pyramid of Khufu, the Great Pyramid of Giza. This is the greatest one or the most huge one uh, among the three pyramids, Pyramid of Khufu. This is a description of the pyramids from inside. The burial of the king as well as his passage from the sword to the next was not simply a private affair of importance only to the royal family and its uh, retinue, but an event of national significance. The ritual cycle by which the living pharaoh, the god Horus, become, became Isuris, lord of the underworld, guaranteed the survival of Egypt itself by expressing this act in an architectural form in the building of the pyramids. The kings of the old kingdom stumbled on or perhaps cunningly devised a method of unifying all Egyptians in a single religion of ancestor worship in which the pyramids served as giant reliquaries. For administrative purposes, Egypt was divided up into provinces or nomes. A governor or nomarch was at the head of each nom and was responsible for Sorry, and was responsible to the pharaoh. These governors tended to 
a mass large holding of land and power within their norm, creating a potential rivalry with the pharaohs. Of special importance to administration of the state was the vast bureaucracy of scribes who kept records of everything. Armed with the knowledge of writing and reading, they were highly regarded and considered themselves a superior class of men. Their high standard of living reflected their exalted status. And as we can see here, this is how the Egyptian scribe looked like. Relief showing men, women, and children suffering from the effects of severe famine, as we see on this wall. Pharaohs crowned with shepherd, crook, and flail. The Middle Kingdom was characterized by new concern of the pharaohs for the people. In the Old Kingdom, the pharaoh had been viewed as an inaccessible god king. Now he was portrayed as shepherd of his people. The Hexus were the source of the new horse-drawn war chariots introduced to Egypt in the second half of the Hexus rule. The invention never seen before in Egypt was instrumental in the continued power of the Hexus in this region. The Hexus utilized superior bronze weapons, chariots, and the composite bows to help them take control of Egypt and by about one, uh, 1720 before Christ they had grown strong enough at the expense of the Middle Kingdom, Kingdom kings to gain control of Avaris in the northeastern delta this site eventually became the capital of the Hexus kings yet within 50 years they had also managed to take control of the important Egyptian city of Memphis Starting in 1567 BC, the pharaoh Ahmos I, I eventually managed to defeat and expel Hexus from Egypt, reuniting Egypt and establishing the new kingdom. From 1567 to 1085 BC, the new kingdom was characterized by new militaristic and imperialistic path. A more professional army was developed by Ahmos. Egyptian sculptors at work on various status, as we see, drawing after a painting in the tomb of Rocky Mile. Amen Hotob. Amen Hotob from 1362 to 1347 BC introduces the worship of Atun, god of the sun disk, as a chief god and pursued his worship with enthusiasm. It changing his own name to Ignatin. It's well with a tune. The pharaoh closed the temples of other gods and especially in the effort to lessen the power of Amun Ra and his priesthood at Tibet. Invasion of the sea people around 1200 BC. The days of Egyptian empire were ended and the new kingdom expired with the end of the 20th dynasty in 1085 BC, for the next thousand years, despite periodic revivals of strength, Egypt was dominated by Libyans, Nubians, Persians, and Macedonians. So, at this point, this is the end of lesson one in our course, and I hope you enjoyed this course and I hope you learned something useful about ancient Egypt civilization. We just need to emphasize that this course is very useful and necessary for everyone interested in Egypt, particularly ancient Egypt. Uh, this course, when you take it, you don't need a translator or guide in your journey to Egypt. It enables learners to learn deeper knowledge about one of the oldest civilizations on the earth. The only course that covers everything about Egypt, several aspects of civilization, Paris, Romans, Arab rule, Memluk and Ottoman rule, British occupation, military rule, and contemporary Egypt. It is not only limited to ancient Egypt. It covers everything about Egyptian civilization and history. This course provides you with knowledge without going through many books. You study through videos and PowerPoint presentation, and you have lifetime access to all course material. So what will you achieve after taking this course? You will be educated about most of Egypt's history and civilization, 
throughout 12 presentations and video lessons. You get also free book and free study material. I hope you enjoy this first lesson. I hope you enjoyed the introductory lesson and the first lesson of uh, this course. At last, I want to let you know how to study this course. You can study it one to one by meeting the instructor on any day you like, any time, every every week if you like, or two times in in a week. In this option, in this first option of a study one to one, you can meet with an instructor whenever you like, at any time you like. You can just click the link below to choose your to choose your suitable day and time. In the second option of the study, you can study in a group lesson, and this is a good option also. You can study on a specific day of the week in a specific time with other people who are interested in ancient Egypt. At last, in this third option, you can study by yourself. You can just uh, get the material and study them by yourself and all the links below to get the material and uh, whenever you find any difficulty you can contact the instructor and this option is good for people who don't have time they just can get the material and study whenever they like and if there is something difficult they can contact the instructor I hope you enjoyed this lesson and please don't hesitate to contact any time whenever you have any question Thank you so much and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.